I'm here with Dr. Romano to do a problem on thermodynamics. Hi, come on around. I want to show you a very interesting problem. And we're going to take boron trichloride with ammonia. And we're going to make a complex of the boron trichloride and ammonia together. So as you can see, we have two gas molecules making a solid. I'm hoping you can kind of see what happened here that this functioned as a Lewis base and this accepted the electrons. So this is a Lewis base and this was the Lewis acid. And I hope you can note that you formed, if I drew it out for you, you can even see it a little clearer, the Lewis acid base complex that I formed. Hope you can see this, this is a plus because you gave up electrons and this received it, borons get a negative. Now. What I want to do in this problem is to see what would the delta S, meaning the entropy of the disorder, be? Would it be positive, meaning are we increasing the disorder, or are we decreasing the disorder? Well, a gas, as you know, has a lot of space, and the particles are very random. So that means if you're forming a gas, you're increasing this, the disorder. Here, you're forming a solid. So you are decreasing the disorder. So hopefully you saw this. Now. Before I continue, I want you to never forget something. When I use the word favorable, or if I say to you, it is thermodynamically favored, I want you to never forget what a favored reaction means. So let me get this out of here. What do I mean when I say favorable? So thermodynamically favored. Now, what you're gonna look for is a positive delta S and a negative delta H. I'm hoping you remembered when the S is positive and the H is negative, that means the reaction is what? Always, always spontaneous at all temperatures. That's a sure bet question on the debt. A positive delta S, meaning you're increasing the disorder and it's exothermic, will always result in a spontaneous reaction and a spontaneous reaction, as you know, has a negative free energy, or Gibbs free energy, which is the amount of energy available to do useful work. A sure bet on the exam. So our main criteria for spontaneity is the delta G. How about part B? If the reaction is spontaneous, what would the value of delta H here be? Well, first of all, we know delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. And we know that the delta S term is negative. And now it says the reaction is spontaneous, which means that this is negative. Now I want you to just think about it. We had the delta S term, which is unfavorable, but yet the overall reaction is spontaneous. So that would mean since this term here made a zero contribution. It actually hurt the ability or didn't make a contribution to being spontaneous. That means it's up to the delta H. The delta H needed to be favored because if the delta H was favorable, then the overall reaction would be spontaneous. So that means the delta H had to be favorable because the S term, as we saw up here, was not favorable. So the delta H had to be negative, so this reaction is driven by enthalpy considerations, not entropy. That was a hard question, so you want to make sure you really understood that. What if I said to you to set up an equation to relate the delta G to the equilibrium constant? We know delta G is minus RT lin of the K. Now, I'm not asking you to calculate anything, but we just got to set the equation up. I'm going to divide both sides by minus RT. So I get delta G over the, there's the minus, RT equals the lin of the K. I'm going to take the anti-log of both sides. So that, an anti-log of lin, would just give you the K by itself, and then this gets put to the E, like this, you would write E, the constant E, over delta G over RT. And you would set it up 
like this. I hope this helps. There was a lot of information on this little clip and absolutely for sure, you're gonna see some questions on the dad land on it. Know how to do this, know what's in the destroyer, you'll be set to go. If you got any questions, hit me up on the Facebook study group. All right, good day to you.